Hello students and welcome back to another geometry video. You know what to do, pause the video, try these problems in your notes, and then unpause it to do them with me. Okay, we are asked to decide whether the congruence statement is true and explain our reasoning. So, first we're looking at triangle QPT and triangle RST. Are they congruent? Well, notice QT and RT. So QT is congruent to RT and QP is congruent to uh, RS and PT is congruent to ST. So, uh, yes, this congruent statement is true by the SSS congruence theorem. Now, you don't need to write SSS congruence theorem. You can just write SSS if you want, as long as we know that you're talking about SSS congruence theorem. That's what matters. Okay, all right. Now, we're looking at the second picture. Is triangle ABC congruent to triangle DCB? So ABC congruent to DCB. Well, let's see. Notice that they share this side right here. They share BC and CB. They share. So we have both of them, both triangles are right triangles and the hypotenuses and in fact let's just call them a c and d b are congruent and uh they share they share leg b c so because they share that side, it's congruent to itself, which means that we have hypotenuse leg because the triangles are right triangles. So yes, by HL congruence theorem. But we can just write HL as long as we know that we're talking about the congruence theorem. Wonderful. Thanks for reviewing 5.5 with me. Now, let's move on to 5.6. 5.6 is about ASA and AAS. Can you guess what they mean? Maybe you can. If not, that's okay. We'll talk about them in a minute. So, our learning target for today is that you know what the ASA and AAS congruence theorems state. And the success criteria is that you can use the ASA and the AAS congruence theorems to solve problems. So, let's jump right into it by reviewing congruent figures. We keep talking about congruence theorems, congruent triangles, so let's just review one more time what congruent figures are. Congruent figures are geometric figures that have the same size. So that means that the sides are congruent and the same shape, which means that the angles are congruent. So congruent figures have congruent sides and congruent angles. Now, so that's what congruent figures are. Now, let's talk about the angle side angle or the ASA congruence theorem. If two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Remember the included angle was the angle in between the two sides. So the included side is going to be the side in between 
the two angles. So if we have ASA in both the triangles, then the triangles are congruent. So that's ASA. We also want to talk about AAS. AAS stands for angle, angle, side. Now, this is two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of a second triangle. Then the two triangles are congruent. So here, the side is not in between the two angles. If the side were in between the two angles, well, then we have ASA. We're not talking about ASA. We're talking about angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So in angle, angle, side, the side is not in between the two angles. We have angle, angle, side. So both theorems have two angles and one side, but it's a matter of where that side is located. If it's in between the two angles, then you have the S in between the two A's, A-S-A. If the side is not between the two angles, then you have A-A-S. Okay, all right. So, now that we know what the A-S-A and A-A-S congruence theorems are, check your understanding of the learning target. How do you feel? Uh, about these theorems. Do you know what they state? Can you put them in your own words? Go ahead and try to put them in your own words and then unpause the video and let's jump into our first example. So our example says, can the triangles be proven congruent with the information given in the diagram? If so, state the theorem you would use. Okay. Let's see. First, we're going to look at A. Now, let me get a different color. We have, you can't see that very well, different color. We have, they already told us that these angles are congruent and these sides are congruent. Now, remember, when two lines cross, the angles opposite each other are called Vertical angles, that's right. And vertical angles are congruent. So we can put these tick marks here that say those middle angles are congruent. Now, look at this. We have angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. The reason I know it's angle, angle, side and not angle, side, angle is because the side is not in between the angles. So, yes. Yes, these triangles can be proven congruent by angle, angle, side. Okay, next. We are given that uh, all three angles, all three angles are congruent. Now, does angle, 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 does that tell us the two triangles are congruent? What do you think? Pause the video and think to yourself. Draw some pictures of two triangles with the same angles and think, does AAA work? Unpause the video and then we'll talk. Now, here's an example of where AAA doesn't work. These angles could be exactly the same, but the sides aren't the same. Maybe these sides are all twice as long. I can dilate, remember from chapter four, I can dilate a shape and all of the angles will still be the same. It'll just, the shape will be the same, but the size will be bigger. Remember that angles control the shape, but sides control the size. So just because I know all of the angles are the same doesn't mean 
then I know the triangles are congruent. So we say no because of angle, angle, angle. No, angle, angle, angle doesn't work because of the example triangles that I drew right here. All right, so let me get another color and let's take a look at C. We are told that these two angles are congruent and we're told that these two angles are congruent. But angle, angle isn't enough. But look at this, they share this side. The two triangles share the side going right down the middle of the two triangles. So, this is angle side angle. Does angle side angle work? Yes, we just learned about it today. So we would say yes, angle side angle. So angle angle side and angle side angle work, but angle 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 doesn't work. Okay, we can check and make sure that we were correct. Vertical angles congruent non-included sides, so AAS. Angle B, there is not enough information because no sides, no sides. And we need to know sides to know that the size is the same. All right, and for part C, two pairs of angles and their included side are congruent, so it is the ASA congruence theorem. <laughs> we were right, yay. All right, let's move on to example number two. What is needed? So, state the third congruent statement that is needed to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So, first, what are we given? We are given that AC is congruent to DF, and we're given that angle A is congruent to angle D. Now, it wants to know what two things need to be congruent in order to use the angle-angle side congruence theorem, and what two things need to be congruent in order to use the angle-side angle theorem. Well, let's color code again. So I'm gonna grab blue for the AAS. So remember, if I want AAS, that means that I have two angles and the side is not in between them. So I need two angles and one side. I already have one angle and one side, so I need another angle. I need another angle because I have two angles and one side for angle, angle, side congruence theorem. So should I use angle C? Or should I use angle B? Which one should I use? Well, if I use angle C, I'll have angle side angle. The side will be in between the two angles, and that's not what I want. I want a non-included side. I want the side not to be in the middle. So, this means that we need angle B to be congruent to angle E. That's what we need in order to use the angle side angle congruence theorem. We need angle B to be congruent to angle E. Okay, now let's get a different color, purple. What needs to be congruent if we want to use the angle side angle congruence theorem? Well, we need two angles and we need a side in between those angles. We already have an angle and a side, so what angle will make this side between the two angles? Well, angle C. Then I'll have angle, side, angle. And angle F will give me angle, side, angle. So I need angle C to be congruent to angle F in order to use the angle, side, angle congruence theorem. Ta-da! Okay, so pay very close attention to which theorem you're going to be using. Is it AAS or is it ASA? Is the side included or is it not included? 
pay very close attention to that. Now, this is our last example for today, determining congruence. Decide whether you can use the given information to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and explain your reasoning. Well, first thing I notice, I don't have any triangles. Where are the triangles? So let's draw some triangles. We'll draw triangle ABC, uh, ABC, and triangle DEF. Remember, they have to go in the same order. If we're talking about ABC being congruent to DEF, they have to go in the same order. A, B, C, D, E, F. So make sure that they go in the same order. Now, they told us angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle C is congruent to angle F. And AC is congruent to DF. Is that enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent? Well, I have two angles and the included side. Two angles and the included side. So yes, yes, if we use ASA congruence theorem, yes, there is enough information to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So. We're going to do this again with the information on the right, but let's be very clear about the process that we walk through. First, we want to draw the two triangles. We're still talking about triangle ABC and triangle DEF, so let's draw. And it doesn't matter what the triangle looks like. I drew them this way the first time. You can draw them however you want. Doesn't matter. So we have A, B, C. Remember, we need to go in the same order, D, E, F. Same order. OK. Now let's mark the information that they gave us. We're going to mark that information on our triangles. So angle C congruent to angle F. A, B congruent to DE, and BC congruent to EF. Let's see, what do we have here? We have side, side, angle, and side, side, angle. Can you use side, side, angle to prove that two triangles are congruent? Wait a minute. This is the bad word. Backwards, this is the bad word. No, side side angle does not work. So, no, we can't use the given information. Side 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 doesn't necessarily work to prove, to prove triangles are congruent. Okay. So, and I say necessarily because there is, right, there's our case of hypotenuse leg that does work. But typically, SSA does not work to prove that triangles are congruent. So, no, nope. Uh, if the angle were in between the two sides, if we had side angle side, that would be okay. But side side angle spells a bad word backwards, so it does not work. The bad word does not work. Okay, let's talk about chapter five in summary. So 5.3, 5.5, and 5.6 in summary. So we have many triangle congruence theorems on the screen. We have side angle side. We learned about that in 5.3. We have side, 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 and hypotenuse leg. Remember, that one is only for right triangles. We learned about these in 
That's a weird looking five. And we know ASA and AAS. We just learned about these in 5.6. So we have learned five methods for proving that triangles are congruent. Now, if these are not in your notes, put them in your notes now. Side angle side means two sides and the included angle. Side 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 is all three sides are congruent. HL is the hypotenuse and one of the legs inside of a right triangle are congruent. ASA is two angles and the included side, and AAS is two angles and a non-included side. Also, remember the bad word, and this SSA backwards is a bad word, the bad word and angle, angle, angle do not work to prove triangle congruence. So, remember the five methods that we did learn but also remember the two methods that don't work to prove triangle congruence. Okay, that is all I have for you today. What I'd like you to do now is please check your understanding of the learning target and the success criteria. Do you know what the angle side angle and the angle angle side congruence theorems state? Do you know what they mean? Can you put them in your own words? And can you use those theorems to solve problems? So rate yourself on a scale of one to three, where one is, no, I don't get it. And three is, oh yeah, I could teach it to somebody else. If you are less than a one, please reach out to your teacher, reach out to a friend, uh, find help, rewatch this video. And if you are greater than a two, you're ready to start some problems. And uh, I think by doing the homework and getting more practice, it'll help you move on up to a three. So these problems, and here I'm gonna get rid of myself for a second. These problems uh, you can do to practice the skills you have learned in this video. We have problems like example one, problems like example two, and problems like example three. So you can try these to test your knowledge of the problems we did in this video and the concepts we learned in this video. Remember to still do your homework. This might not be the homework that your teacher has assigned. So be sure to do the homework that your teacher assigns as well. Now, as usual, we're gonna end our video with a launch. So this launch comes from an unknown person, but it says, one day or day one, it's your decision. So what's the difference? What's the difference between one day and day one? The only difference is in your attitude. We can say, one day I'll have a boyfriend. One day I'll write a book. One day I'll have a job that I love. Or you can say, this is day one of finding the job I love. This is day one of writing that book. This is day one of me searching for that boyfriend instead of waiting for the right one to come to me. The difference between one day and day one is your attitude. So you can take charge of the things that you want. One day I'll be in shape. No, this is day one of your new ab workout. This is day one of your running every day or something. Day one, make it day one. Uh, decide, it's, so it's your decision to start doing the things that you truly care about. So make it day one. And if you truly care about it, decide this is day one. I'm gonna make it happen because it's something that I really care about. So try to get yourself out of the one day, get yourself out of that mentality and get yourself into, I can control this. I can make my life what I want it to be. This is day one. So that is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.